What is happening guys? Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. I recently put up a poll on my Instagram asking you guys to ask me if you had any questions for me to answer. And so I thought it would actually be a good idea to make some individual videos just talking about these questions, getting right to the point and giving you guys my answers rather than making one super long video and trying to answer everybody's questions. So this is for sure the most common question that I received from you guys. Which motor is better or which motor do you prefer, the S55 or the B58? This is sort of a tough question to answer. So what I'm gonna preface this with is I'm gonna give you guys my response on what I think of both of them and which platform I prefer because of my lifestyle and what I'm doing with these cars. Obviously what people think about these cars is a bit subjective and opinionated and it's really gonna come down to what you plan on doing with the car itself. There are benefits and drawbacks to both of these motors and both of these platforms and obviously the S55 is in different cars. Same thing with the B58. You have a wide range of chassis that the B58 is in as well. And I think that that is also very important when it comes down to choosing which motor you want in which car and why that would be better versus the other one. Right now, obviously I have the S55 and this is my first time owning an S55. It is in my M4 GTS. However, I've had a bit of experience with the B58. I had it in my Supra and then I also had it in my 340. So this is a very tough question for me to answer because I really like both platforms. I think both of them are super capable. I really liked the B58 in my Supra, most specifically because I just really liked the Supra in general. I thought the ZF transmission went really well with the B58 in that car. I also really liked the styling of it. But with the B58, it is extremely easy to make a lot of power. So the Gen 2, B58, the TU that I had in my Supra already had a very efficient high pressure fuel pump. So there was really no need to upgrade any of the fueling in that car. It's pretty much good to go from the factory. I think those cars were just made for car enthusiasts and people who wanted to tune their cars and add parts to it and make them super fast. We have seen so many Supras break into eights and even into seven second quarter mile times, which is just incredible for a car that's still relatively new to the scene. In addition to that, they have the M340s, which have also been extremely fast cars that also are equipped with the B58. So the older models like the 340, which I had a B58 in, that was the Gen 1 B58, is also a highly capable motor. With that motor, you are gonna want to upgrade the fueling. I went and did the Dorch High Pressure Fuel Pump Stage 2, but from there on out, it's basic modifications, basic bolt-ons to make really, really good power in those cars. So to put it into perspective, both the Supra and the 340, once I upgraded that high pressure fuel pump, they were easily capable of making 600 wheel horsepower. Now that is a ton of power in a car that is the size of a Supra and that's why people like them so much. They are relatively light cars, incredibly nimble. The ZF transmission can hold up to just about that much power. Going any further, you're gonna start slipping, but you are building 10 second cars with very little effort. Not to mention with the B58, a lot of the modifications aren't really that expensive expensive, which kind of brings me over to my point with the S55. So obviously the S55s can also make really good power, mod for mod quite effortlessly when compared to the B58. However, it is going to be more expensive to modify and maintain an S55 powered car versus a B58 powered car. Now I'm not gonna just rattle off a bunch of specifications for you guys and what these cars make stock and all of that because you can do that yourself. You can go on Google and find out all that information yourself. But I will tell you that with the simple bolt-ons, upgraded hybrid turbo, a good E30 mix, E50 mix tune, and your basic, basic bolt-ons, intake charge pipe, exhaust, stuff like that, you can make well into the 600 wheel horsepower range. And the Supers and 340s are just very capable cars. If you are buying a car to do roll racing or street racing or dig racing, the Supras and 340s are fantastic for that application because of how effortless they make their power because of how reliable the B58 is and because of how quick they actually are in a straight line. They can get traction pretty easily. My 340 was all wheel drive. That thing would hook and go. The Supra can also hook and go with the right tire setup, but 
you are definitely going to want to look into upgrading those axles once you get into those higher horsepower and torque numbers. With the S55, I've found that you can make really good power with these cars, however, it is gonna be a lot more expensive comparatively to the B58. I think that that's why a lot of people really like the B58 platform is because it's a great entry level BMW platform to get into without having to spend a ton of money and really worry about maintenance that much. If something goes wrong on your S55, it is probably going to be pretty expensive to fix or replace. These are just more expensive cars and with that comes more expensive modifications, more expensive maintenance, maintenance. It's just a bit more costly to own, whereas in comparison to the B58s, they're relatively cheap and affordable. Ask me how I know I literally lost a B58 motor, but I will say that that whole circumstance had nothing to do with reliability. That was just a freak incident where a part was able to get into my engine and ultimately destroy the motor, so I had to source a new one. However, if that were to happen to my S55, it would cost double, probably more, than what I paid for my Gen 1 B58 to be replaced. With that being said, the reason that you buy something like an M4 or an M3, we're talking about F8X or M2 Comp, in my opinion, is more because you're interested in the handling characteristics of this car and its chassis. Now, there are plenty of people that are out there driving these cars in straight lines, racing them, drag racing them. They are fast as hell. There's no doubt about that in a straight line. However, I think that that is one of the biggest things that separates the Supra and F30 from the F82, the F80, and the F87 M2. Really, the chassis, the handling. For me, I didn't buy this car to go fast in a straight line, so when it comes to what I wanted out of the car, I wanted a car that would handle really good. That's why I bought this car. So like I said, the, the debate of B58 or S55, it just, it's just comes down to the person who's buying it. What is more important to you? What can you afford? What are you looking to get out of the car or the motor? If you are someone that does a lot of racing, a lot of dig racing, and you just wanna put some cheap mods on and make some really good power pretty effortlessly, B58 powered platform all day. The Supras are still kind of expensive, but you can get into the 344 a pretty low cost at this point. I think when I bought my 340, I bought it for about $28,000. It was a 2016, it was all wheel drive, and it had 60,000 miles on it at the time. It wasn't perfect by any means, but for the majority of people, it would have been absolutely fine. This M4 GTS is also a 2016, and I've just really fallen in love with this car and haven't really felt the need to take it any further as far as performance modifications. It's kind of just perfect the way it is in my opinion. As far as street races go and going to street races, those days are sort of behind me. I was street racing 20 years ago. <laughs> That'll tell you how old I was, but I was street racing 20 years ago in different Hondas. And that's really when the street racing scene was relatively fresh and had a much different community based around it. Street racing wasn't something that you could find out about online. It was either you just kind of knew where to go and you knew the people to meet up with and you knew when the races would be and if you didn't, you just kind of had to find your way into that community. But during those days, I had like a 200 horsepower Honda Civic. You know, like the days are much different now, 20 years later. I mean, if you're not even like in the 800s, you're really not fast. If you don't have an 800 wheel horsepower car, you're just not fast. That's the reality of the world that we live in now. This car is probably making a little over 500 wheel. My 340 was making 620 wheel. My Supra was making 600 wheel. All extremely fast cars. However, the Supras have really proven to be one of the best platforms when it comes to street racing, dig racing, and being able to modify your car for a relatively low cost and do so reliably. So again, the question is just a very tough one for me to answer because it's just so specific to what each person prefers. For me personally, I really like the S55 platform. It has treated me well, but my objectives and my goals right now are a lot different than when I was like building the Supra and I wanted to go really fast in a straight line. If I had an S55 powered car and a B58 powered car, that would really be like the best of both worlds. And so I think in the future, I would love to have 
have another B58 powered car in the garage, probably a Supra if I were to do it, or the new M240, which is going to be all wheel drive. I think that that car is going to be a monster once people realize that we are talking about an all wheel drive Supra. I even talked to the dealership and was asking them, you know, what would it take to get one of those? Right now, the wait is six months. So even if I put in an allocation, it's gonna take six months for that car to get built unless I find one that someone already built or had or owned or whatever, and they are giving up. However, a M240 all wheel drive right now that already has, let's say 10,000 miles on it is actually going to sell for more than a new one. If I were to just buy a new one, because you have to wait for the new one. So it's kind of one of those gambles. Like, do I want to go ahead and buy one of those and wait six months? Or do I just want to find a used one and get one like that? But I have been heavily considering getting an all wheel drive M240 because I think that those cars are going to be one of the next best B58 powered cars that you could get your hands on. So I think that if you're new to BMW and you prefer like street racing or 40 rolls and you want to do so on a smaller budget, any of those, the B58 is the way to go. Whether it's the Supra or the 340, I personally would take the Supra, but for a 340, it's probably gonna be even cheaper. I think that that's where that person would fall. For the S55, depends on what you're looking to do with the car. If you got a little more money and you're really interested more in like the handling characteristics of the car, or you just like the way that the F8X models look, then obviously the S55 is gonna be more for you. But just know that it is gonna be a little bit more expensive to modify and maintain these cars. But lastly, you guys, the S58 is going to be the daddy of them all. The S58 has already proven to be an absolute monster of a car, platform, engine. They're performing really well, not taking much to get into the nines. Femto Unlock, E50 Tune, E60 Tune, and you're pretty much already looking at a nine second street car, which is mental. However, again, S58 is an, a G8X platform engine. You're talking talking about a very expensive car, six figure car in most cases in this market. And a lot of people can't afford that. So I think that when it comes down to S55, S58 and B58, the better motor all around is going to be the B58 because of the cost, the reliability, how easy they are to get parts for, how popular that engine is, and how quick the cars are, the chassis are, that are being built around that engine. So hopefully this answered the question, uh, in my opinion, which would be the better one for the majority of people, is probably the B58. Doesn't mean I don't love my S55, because I absolutely do, but I think that for the majority of people out there, the B58 is gonna be a really good motor to go with. Anyways, guys, if you feel like asking me a question and you want a video answered to that question, make sure you check out my Instagram and I'm gonna be putting up a lot of polls and just answering your guys' question. We'll go through them one by one. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe, like the video. See you guys in the next one. Peace.